Shannon's original motivation was to study and introduce quantitative measures to quantify the channel capacity needed to send messages through electronic telephone lines. And it is often said that Shannon's entropy does not quantify meaning, which is, to some degree, correct in the context of communication theory, because Shannon entropy seems not to care about the meaning of a, of a message or its actual content. In other words, Shannon entropy does not care whether you are trying to send a message such as I'll meet you for lunch on Tuesday 2 p.m. or a possibly random looking number such as 84592646. However, there is another angle to Shannon entropy that suggests exactly the contrary, and it is both what makes this measure interesting but also its limitation. Meaning in Shannon entropy is deeply encoded in the form of the underlying assumption. In other words, the context in which a question related to entropy is made. For example, if the number 84592646 in our example is a telephone number, it makes a lot of difference because the underlying ensemble for the entropy measure is over the distribution of not all possible numbers but only the set of valid telephone numbers. So Shannon entropy cannot only distinguish between data if we start from knowing that a sentence is written in English or is a telephone number. So this information makes entropy to care about meaning, but at the same time provides no tools to update the underlying assumptions or seek for that knowledge. We will see later how this is different with algorithmic complexity. Otherwise said, if you have any knowledge of the ensemble for your distribution, then Shannon entropy is all about meaning. For example, the sentence I'll meet you for lunch on Tuesday 2 p.m. only has meaning if you know that this sentence is written in English. So by knowing that this sentence belongs to a subset of well-formed English sentences, then the entropy of the sentence becomes significantly lower than assuming that the string can be in the space of all possible letters and words, for which the entropy will be much larger. The problem with entropy, so to speak, is not that it is unable to convey or capture meaning, but that it is ambiguous or fragile for exactly the same reason related to probability distributions. Because Shannon entropy by itself does not provide any means to estimate the probability distribution, and so it relies in practice on traditional statistics or the observer's beliefs or lack of knowledge. In general, one ends up using a general assumption for the uniform distribution, which makes entropy to become a trivial function of symbol counting. Indeed, if the uniform distribution is assumed, as it is in most cases, what Shannon entropy is measuring is the multiplicity of the different symbols used in a sequence, just as, as it does its counterpart measure of entropy in physics that counts the number of possible microstates, such as particles or molecules in a given volume of space. Leaving those arguments related to meaning and the limitations of entropy aside, there are interesting properties of entropy worth mentioning and studying. For example, one of the general properties of Shannon entropy is that redundancy does not add new information as one would theoretically expect. Once fixed the number of symbols or letters, the greater redundancy, the lower the entropy. For example, repeating the letter E at the end of some words does not provide any new information than the original sentence and as a function of the sequence length. So the entropy drops just as it can be seen. In practice, with no means to calculate or make a well-educated guess of the underlying probability distributions, entropy is indeed blind to meaning and is a measure of combinatorial diversity, so a sentence may have the same entropy as some other scamblet version of the same sentence, as long as it uses the same letters. For example, these two arrangements of letters have the same entropy when considering the ensemble of all possible sequences of the same length using letters from the Latin alphabet. This is despite one of the letter arrangements being a sentence and having meaning in English, because entropy by its own cannot know that this sequence may belong to some sort of language. However, if we consider only the set of valid English sentences, 
to build the under underlying probability distribution on which entropy would operate, then the sentence in English would have much lower entropy, because we would know that in English, for example, it is very rare or impossible to see the letter J next to P and R, or a word starting with Z. And those kind of information that we could infer from knowing and using the distribution of sentences in a language like English. Now, a generalization of the concept of a letter in a message is the concept of a microstate. A microstate can be any unit, such as bits in a binary sequence. Assuming equal probability for all sequences of the same length, we have that a pseudo-random sequence of 2000 zeros and ones produced by the function random integer in the Wolfram language has almost the same Shannon entropy than the highly structured sequence of repeating zero one a thousand times. This is because taking single bits as microstates or units for the application of entropy, these sequences look equally diverse to entropy. They have about the same number of ones and zeros. So we would need to take as microstate two bits in order to have entropy to retrieve a low entropy value for the sequence of zero one repeated a thousand times as one would intuitively have expected, given that the second sequence looks ordered and not random. Here is a hundred experiments producing pseudo-randomly sequences each with 100 binary digits, showing how all are so close to one maximum entropy. This is because the intended behavior of a pseudo-random generating function like random integer is to produce about the same number of ones and zeros in a disarranged fashion if it is a good pseudo-random number generator. So the Shannon entropy of these sequences will be the log of 2, with a very small standard deviation among several trials, that is, many different pseudo-random arrangements. This last example on binary strings can help us in understand another process. The entropy of a sequence resulting from tossing a coin, for example, is maximized when the coin is fair producing about the same number of heads and tails, that is the two possible outcomes that can come with equal probability 1 over 2 or 50-50. This is a situation of maximum, maximum uncertainty as it is the most difficult to predict the outcome of an unbiased coin. The result of each toss of the coin is said to deliver one full bit of information because you have no idea what will come next. However, if the coin were biased and came heads all the time, then each new toss would have entropy zero, because there is no surprise. You know what will come with very good chances. Every time the coin is tossed, one side is more likely to come up than the other. This reduced uncertainty is quantified by entropy. This is how a typical textbook example for the Shannon entropy of a random variable looks like. Try to recall this plot because we will see something similar later on when we introduce new tools and make comparisons to entropy. So maximum fairness in a random process such as tossing a coin is reached when the coin produces the same number of heads and tails, that is when there is a 50% probability of being heads or tails, and when uncertainty is maximal as illustrated in the plot. Not, note that the maximum value of the graph in the formula for entropy depends on the logarithmic base and the distribution assumed. Here the entropy is at most 1 as we are assuming a uniform distribution and base 2 logarithm, for which the result is said to be in bits. From that plot, one can also see how entropy is a function of symbol density or symbol count. Here are some examples of binary and trinary sequences where both the number of symbols and the number of repetitions determine their Shannon entropy, both for natural and binary logarithms. But if we do the same with the random looking sequence, we now get a divergent value from the ordered case, which indicates that it is truly random, or is it not? We will see that entropy, with no other tool, can only see one simple kind of randomness, that is statistical randomness, such as the one we have been exhibiting here, 
by changing the coarse graining. That type of randomness is a periodic regularity. So entropy is not only about the internal syntactic structure of a message, but also about how much we know about the underlying ensembles and assumed distributions, and hence in a way is highly epistemological, although reduced to syn syntax in practice in the face of a complete lack of information. You can see that for this particular case, when taking every bit as the microstate for entropy, the arrangement of the zeros and ones is irrelevant as long as the number of zeros and ones remain the same. Entropy values also vary significantly as a function of the number of potential symbols available. One way to tell apart the cases, such as repetition of zero and one in alternation or randomly arranged having basically the same entropy, such as in this example, is by taking different microstate lengths or coarse graining the data, the, in this case the sequence. So entropy can find out the ordered nature of the sequence. For example, by taking units of two bits, we get that the entropy for that alternating 0-1 sequence is indeed zero. 